All right, we are live. Welcome. Every answer your questions. Uh, let's see if anyone shows up first <laughs> before I start answering questions. Let me refresh my page and see if that works. Looks like that's working. All right. Good deal. All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's see if anyone comes. So I'm here. I see a couple watchers on. Um, cool. So the reason I'm showing up tonight is because we have this final enrollment going on for my music licensing masterclass program. And if you haven't jumped into this before, this is your last chance. Uh, tomorrow night at midnight, I'll be closing the doors. Uh, so I'm here to answer any questions that you have, uh, whether you're hearing about this for the first time now, or you were at our training earlier in the week on how to get your music heard by music supervisors. Uh, this is the last time I'll be opening up the doors for enrollment for my music licensing masterclass program. So, uh, any questions that anyone might have, now's the time to ask. So if you're here and you're watching, go ahead and drop in the chat. Let me know that you're watching and let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, I'm just going to hang out a bit until people show up. But uh, yeah, that's the, the purpose of this is to answer your questions that you might have about music licensing. Um, and in particular, what you have about the Masterclass program. If you have any questions about what this program covers, if you haven't taken it before, um, it really, the reason I created, just going back to 2020, why I, why I created License Your Music, uh, was because I remember uh, being an artist, a recording artist, before I was in the music business, before I was on the inside looking in, I was on the outside looking in, and I remember what that felt like. And I remember feeling like I just couldn't penetrate, I couldn't get in to the music business, I couldn't figure out how to advance my career, I'd just gig and gig and gig, and I was getting pretty tired of that. So, oh, hey, Joel. Um, let's see what you're asking here. Let me, I'm gonna, I'll hold that question. I'm gonna continue here for a moment, but thanks for joining us. Good to see you here. Where are you coming in from? Let me know in the, in the chat where you're joining from. Also, if you are watching and you're not on YouTube, you won't be able to chat message me. So if you're watching this from Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn, or Twitch, or wherever you're watching from, you need to come over to our YouTube channel at License Your Music, and that you have to subscribe, and then you're able to chat message because I'm broadcasting through YouTube. So that's where I can uh, chat message you back and answer your questions. So I'll answer your question in a moment, Joel. Joel what I was saying is just the reason I, I started this, and started doing this, was I was on the outside looking in, and I got tired of that. I wanted to just peel back the curtain for you guys and give you access and teach you everything that I've learned over the past 15 years to give you a leg up and help you move forward in your careers in music, in your music career, so you can create music full time and do something that you want to do. So that's why I started it. So let me answer your question because now I, I, I will answer this question for you, Joel. Um, but this, the purpose of this call is actually to at, answer specific questions about the masterclass. But since it's just you and me chatting, let's go ahead and answer here. What do we got? I'm interested to know if a song needs to be released. Sometimes supervisors won't take songs that are released and some do. It's so confusing. Yeah, so you're right. Some want, sometimes there's a request for a released material and other times it needs to be unreleased. So the answer is both. Um, you know, it really is a project to project basis. So I would say for you, if you are an artist and you want to keep releasing material, then just write and release material. And hopefully you have some systems in place where you can have material banked and, uh, you know, six months down the line, you have something coming out, but you've already got it recorded or you're mixing it or mastering it. That's when you would pitch it as an unreleased product. But if you're really a recording artist and that's all you do and you tour and you record, then you should regularly be recording material. So there should always be something unreleased. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. If you're not a touring artist, if you're just um, a producer or an artist recording from your home studio like I do, uh, I sit on material. I don't bother releasing it because I don't care about Spotify or the streams or the followers or the fans there. I know that I can monetize it through licensing. So um, a lot of material I have for years now is unreleased. I actually wait to release it until I get a placement because it cannot hurt to have it be unreleased. Um, there are exceptions to that. Let me explain what that is. So there will be requests at some point for tracks from a certain time period. 
So right now I'm starting to see requests from 2004, 2005. They want songs that were recorded and released during that time period. And this is only for certain projects, not every project, but certain projects will want that. So when you release it, it's time stamped. And that has pros and cons to it. It's released, it's out in the world. There's some pros that go with that. The con is that it's now time stamped and it's no longer considered unreleased. So I know that doesn't really answer your question, but maybe it gives some clarity on why you've been hearing different things. What's going on, Alex Reynoso, Dallas? Thanks for being here. And look, coming in from Dallas. Alex Reynoso, coming in from Dallas. You're joining us from Dallas. Cool. Cool. You are learning on how to market your music and your band's music. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Uh, I joined the masterclass. Angela, yes, you did. I'm not new to sync, but I didn't want to miss out. Yes, I think that was smart. Um, you're, if you haven't already gone through it, uh, you're going to find that there's some definite unique uh, things about my program that are unique to me. Um, yes, you're very welcome, Joel. And let me see if this button works here. Hide comment. Post comment. Okay, just hide comment works. All right. Uh, some of my placements. Gosh. Ash, I've been doing this since 2004. And... Um, there's too many to list, my friend. I, I, I'm, I don't say that to brag, but I, I've got placements in so many projects. I've licensed over 10,000 songs. Uh, some of my favorites are Star Trek Picard trailer, um, Gunpowder Milkshake trailer, uh, Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul, uh, The Recruit. I think we just got a confirmation today for The Cleaning Lady on Fox. Um, uh, there's just, there's so many. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I... You know, I could name drop from, you know, Hulu to Fox to Netflix to Showtime to HBO Max, um, Disney. I've really placed on all of them. So uh, you can actually find more about that on this website. Okay, so why we're here tonight is to talk about and answer any questions you guys have about my program. Because this is the final enrollment I'm ever doing for my music licensing masterclass. It ends in a, one day, six hours, 52 minutes. So that is it down below. Uh, that link down below, licenseyourmusic.com slash now, touches on some of my placements and really about more about me and what I've done. Uh, I started as a recording artist and a songwriter. I became a sync agent back in 2006 when I moved to LA. And uh, then I started be uh, music supervising in 2008. So I get to wear a lot of different hats. I'm a music supervisor. When I'm doing that, I'm working on projects. People are sending me their music. Uh, I'm clearing music, I'm working with the creative to help figure out their budget and overall creative direction for those projects. So I'm essentially a buyer, you can look at that as a buyer, who you're, you're pitching your music to. And then other times I'm a licensing agent or a sync agent uh, and operating like a publisher where I'm pitching music that I represent from my own catalog to music supervisors, to my colleagues. So uh, I've music supervised projects like uh, Won't You Be My Neighbor for Focus Features, a film, um, Netflix, Ugly Delicious on Netflix. I did a show called Ingress the Animation, which is a 13-part uh, animation based on a video game called Ingress, created by the guy who created Pokemon and Google Earth. They created Ingress together. It's a really, really cool, fun series if you're into anime. That's on Netflix. I also worked on a project called Breakfast, Lunch, Dinner for Netflix. Um, what else? I did this thing for HBO years ago. Uh, called Yo-Yo Ma and the Music of Strangers, the Silk Road on Ens oh, Yo-Yo Ma and the Silk Road Ensemble, the Music of Strangers. So uh, check that out. That's a really cool documentary about the power of music being a common language between musicians. Uh, so really, really good one that I enjoyed working on. That was a lot of classical music to clear from all over the world. We had 29 songs to clear for that project. It was a fun one. Uh, what else have I worked on? It kind of escapes me at the moment. Um, but you can check out my credits on IMDB. IMDB, if you Google Jody Friedman Music Supervisor, you'll find my credits on there and all the shows that I've been working on. So there you go. In your course, here's a question about the course. Yes, Better Call Saul is amazing. Yes, it is. Uh, all right. Joelle asks, in your course, let me move this away. Do you teach metadata for the pitches? Yes. There is a specific 
lesson. It's, a, it's the longest lesson in the program. It's about 28 minutes long. I have seven modules um, and a bonus content. And I think it's in module six, which is how to pitch your music. And there's a, a lesson on metadata. And it, so I, I go through step by step how to, we listen to songs together and I take you through the process of inputting metadata into a spreadsheet so you know what that thought process should be like. So yes, we talk about metadata. I talk about how to pitch your music, how to prepare for a pitch meeting, um, the proper things to do when going into a pitch meeting, which is really important to know. Um, these are the things that I've just learned from doing it the wrong way over a, a long time. Also, do you teach how we find what the supervisors are working on so we know what to pitch? Yes, yes I do. That's all in the How to Pitch Your Music uh, module. We talk about um, how to go about that process, how to find the supervisors and the projects that they're working on, but also how to understand their thought process and a day in the life. I take you through a day in the life of a supervisor. So, because, Joel, I know it's, it's, it's oftentimes what everyone asks is, how can I pitch my music? I want to find projects for my music, but really the question you need to be asking is, how can I help be of service to these supervisors and make their jobs easier? Because if you're helping them by making their jobs easier, it's not always going to be pitching your music to them. There might be some other approaches, and we go over that in the program. Uh, so I think that's really an important thing to understand. Think about the fact that there's so many people pitching them their music, and yes, they need music, but generally they're turning to trusted sources. So how can you get into that system and integrate yourself into that system? And how can you empower yourself with the knowledge so when you do meet the supervisors one-on-one, -on -one, you form a natural relationship instead of it just being transactional? I think that's really an important thing to, uh, to focus on when you're pitching your music and pitching yourself because it's sales. And when you're selling your music or you're selling a car or you're selling anything, I, I hate to compare it to used car salesmen because I know that that's a terrible thing to compare it to. But what you're selling is yourself. You're selling who you are. And, you know, you want to buy from people that you like. You don't want to buy from people you don't like. So when you meet with supervisors, they want to work with you if they like you. And that's the thing about it. Not every supervisor is going to like you. So um, part of it is finding the right partners for you and your music. That's part of what I teach. So uh, I hope that helps. Let's see. Um, Bitterman asks, I just want to be a part of this giant process we are all a part of. The licensed music has to go somewhere. So if there's somewhere I can implement myself to put these songs or effects in the movies or shows, it would mean a lot to me. Bitman, that's, uh, my program is perfect for you. Uh, if you haven't taken it, I highly recommend getting in on it. Um, this will really give you a new perspective. I mean, you're saying what the dream is, what the aspiration is for all, all artists, all musicians who want to get into licensing, absolutely. But there's no shortcuts. You've got to take the time to learn the business and learn the fundamentals of the business so that you can communicate with other professionals like a professional. That's the first step of any business you're in. We all know that from being a kid, we learn about different things so that we can communicate with others, like about math or English or science or social studies. You learn different subjects in school so that you can educate yourself, so that you can communicate with other humans. And it's the same with the licensing business. You have to learn the business. It's called the music business for a reason. And if you fear the business, if this is something that there's any part of the music licensing process or the business that you are unsure about, then you need to jump into my program before it's gone. So just something to consider. Hello, Jody. What are the current projects you are working on? Is there anything you are looking for in particular? Not right now, Samantha. I am on break. I am on hiatus from projects. Uh, the course. I have not answered how long the course is. The course itself. Let's see if I can move these chats up a little bit. And maybe I can shrink them down a little. There we go. The course itself is about three and a half to four hours of content. They're bite-sized videos. Uh, you can make your way through it at your own pace. Uh, you could plow through it in one sitting if you want. I, what I'd like to encourage people to do, and there's also, there's another six hours of bonus content beyond that, but the core program is three and a half hours. And I kept it 
really concise and simple because I think simple is more powerful. Um, so I kept it simple. And um, what I recommend you do is go through the course once and then go through it again. And the first time through, just watch it, take it in like you're sitting in a lecture hall. And the second time you go through it is when you ask questions down below. Because what I find people do as they're going through module one, module two, module three, module four, they have so many questions and they're excited and they're asking all these questions. But I answer them in module five, module six, module seven, module eight. So um, go through it once all the way through and then hop back in and any notes, any questions you have, that's the time to ask. And of course you can ask it at any time. I'll get in there and answer. but. I think you'll find that's the best way to really absorb the content. It's a lot of content, um, but it's it's going to take you to the next level if you're not already, like I said, if you really don't understand the licensing business or how music supervisors think. Um, it's the what, the fundamentals, the who, how the decision making process happens. Um, who all the gatekeepers are, what the what that process looks like, like who do supervisors answer to exa exactly, what do music coordinators do, what does a clearance house do, how do you approach a pitch, what's the proper mindset to go into that meeting with. I have a whole module on mindset called Elevate, it's module two. And I put that on module two because if your mindset's not right, you're not gonna be able to succeed in anything you do. So module two is like a tune-up uh, and if you're here right now, it's because you're interested in doing this. You want to do this for a career. And I think that's amazing. Um, I realized that two years, when did I realize that? I realized that in 2005. I'd only been doing it for a year and I saw, I got the placement with CNN back in 2005. And I thought, holy crap, I can make money from my songs and I don't have to tour or gig and I can make good money. My first placement was a $30,000 placement, which is pretty unusual for your first placement. But when I saw that, it was life changing for me. Now that money didn't last long. <laughs> it happened once. It allowed me to move to California and set up my business. But in the next two years and the first one to two years in licensing, you've got to work. You've got to work at it. You've got to study it. You've got to build the relationships. You've got to work on your product. But when you get that first placement, and then you get another placement, the first one to two are the hardest ones to get. You'll find that it just spirals from there. You start getting another and another and another. And that royalty income will just start going like this. And you'll get those upfront license fees as well. So I, I cannot recommend licensing enough. Whether you do take my program or somebody else's, I cannot recommend it enough. I think that it will be life changing for those of you who are not doing it. Uh, let's see. Hi, I want to offer promotion of your channel. Um, what is it? The price is lower. Yeah, Noisy Dharma. I'm not interested. I'm going to ban you. Go away. Okay. Samantha Mara. Well, I have lifelong, lifelong access to this course. Yes, you have lifelong access to this program. And uh, the cost is 75% off retail. It's normally $19.97. It's priced at $4.97 because it's the last time I'm doing this. So um, really, really an amazing price for what you're getting. Um, let's see. Joelle says, the course sounds fabulous. I want to get into Disney more than anything. Side note question, Guild of Music Supervisors is having an award on March 3rd. It's actually March 5th, uh, I believe. Sunday, March 5th. Worth it for face-to-face? -face? Absolutely. Absolutely. If you're thinking of going, I think there's only a few tickets left for in person. They might be sold out, but it's crowded. I will say that it's uh, it's pretty busy. But if you build one new relationship, think about it. If you build one new relationship from showing up and connecting with someone and hanging out, that's worth the value alone and going to an event like that. And that relationship may not turn into a license or income, but it leads to other things. And it could lead to a, a, a placement 10 years from now. Who cares? It's relationship building. It's a long-term thing. So absolutely, if you can attend the Guild Conference or any live event where you're networking with other people in the, in the, bid, in the business, there's nothing better than face-to-face. -face. Uh, the typical payout for a placement in both TV and film. So um, it varies. I go more in depth into this in the program, um, but 
it can range anywhere from $500 to uh, 30000 and up for an independent artist for TV and film. Uh, let's see, can anyone go to this event, people who aren't supervisors? Yes, the Guild of Music Supervisors has events that anybody can go. You'd be called a friend of the Guild. You'd have to join as a friend of the Guild and you can attend. Absolutely. Let's see, I'm signed up to your mailing list question. Isn't the sync licensing market saturated? That's a great question. There are a lot of people doing sync licensing, but a lot of them are looking for shortcuts. And those of us who are receiving music and getting pitched to, we can sense that from a mile away. When someone pitches their music and they're not prepared, they're not pitching it the right way, or their their emails poorly crafted, or they meet us in person and they're just not going about things the right way, we're on guard because we're working with intellectual property. We're working with copyright. I'm working with copyright on behalf of my clients. So I have to protect my clients first and foremost. So yes, it's saturated, but there's still only the top 5% that are succeeding. So if you want to be in that top 5%, then take my program. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> it's true. I mean, it's not just taking the program though. I will say that you've got to take the program and you've got to apply what you learn. So if you're in the program and you learn it, just like anything, you watch a YouTube how to do this video and you just sit back and you don't do it, nothing's gonna happen. You gain the knowledge, that's great, but you've gotta take the action. You've gotta implement what you learn. That's how you're gonna succeed long-term. If anybody's watching this that's on um, Amazon Live, it looks like someone's on Amazon Live. That's awesome, I've never done that before. That's a new experiment. Amazon Live, um, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitch. I'm broadcasting all of them right now. Head over to our YouTube page at License Your Music. It's youtube.com slash license your music and subscribe and then we can chat message back and forth. All right, Samantha, you're asking me, what were your first two placements and how did you land them independently or with representation? Also, what were your favorite placements? Great questions. <laughs> My first placement ever was for CNN. I was very fortunate because I worked for CNN at the time. I started it, I worked there for seven years and I was on a show called, I was doing audio for a show called Nancy Grace on Headline News. And I was actually on the way to a gig, had my guitar on my back and the executive producer, his name's Dean Sicoli, he stopped me in the hall and we just started talking music. Um, and he said to me, you know, we need a new theme song for the All Points Bulletin theme in the show. And I had done uh, some fiddling around in GarageBand. So I literally went home through some loops together in GarageBand and I turned it in the next day. Um, Nancy was a good friend as well, Nancy Grace, the host. And she helped me push it through. I mean, you know, turning it in was just part of it. Like she put in a good word for me. Hey, have you listened to Jody's song? Like she was very helpful and very instrumental in getting that through. So again, the relationship that I had even though I worked there internally, it helped me to have that relationship with Nancy because she was a, a champion for me. Um, so it eventually got licensed and they wanted to buy up the performance royalties. This was about a year later that they licensed it. And by that time I'd educated myself, again, the power of knowledge. I'd educated myself by reading a lot of books and taking courses and I knew enough to say no when they wanted to buy out my performance royalties because there's no license fee. I worked there, there's no upfront license fee and I didn't expect a license fee. I was just looking for a placement just to get started. So I had then about a year later um, quit my job. We were moving out west. So I quit my job, headed out west. My wife got a job offer out here. So we headed out here and on the way across the country I got my royalty check and it was 15,000 for the writers and 15,000 for the publisher's share. That was my first royalty check. So kind of an unusual experience in terms of my first placement, um, but I did do it independently. And this was a different time. I'm gonna put the question back up. Samantha, this was a different time because uh, at the time I showed up in LA or I'm in Orange County, so the greater Los Angeles area. I was able to contact music supervisors, email them. I emailed Gary Calamar. I sent him my versions of uh, little boxes for weeds. He listened to it, he got back to me. So thanks so much, you know, 
can we meet sometime? Sure, no problem. I went down and met with him in his office. And, you know, then I met with, um, oh, what's her name? Oh, gosh. Andrea Baum Forrester uh, and others who were accessible. Chris Molaire, others who were accessible at that time and very uh, approachable. They weren't as busy as they are now. Uh, so I was able to do that independently. And then I realized very quickly in those meetings that if I wasn't just, if I was just pitching Jody Aaron, my middle name's Aaron, if I was just pitching Jody Aaron, the artist, I was gonna be pretty limited on what I could do and how, how I could have a long-term career. So I started a sync agency and I started signing other artists. So I became a rep myself. This is now 2007, 2008. 2008, got my first good placement with Gary on um, Weeds and then True Blood. And, you know, because uh, of those two placements, others took notice. I think that when certain supervisors are using your music, it carries weight and other supervisors notice that. So that's why I say when you get those first two, and it took me, you know, even I was out here, I moved here, out here in 2006, that first placement didn't come for two years later, and I was doing it myself. It wasn't for my songs, it was for other songs that I represented, but it still took me two years to get those placements. So uh, because of that, others started looking my way and I started getting uh, more placements. And that's I think that's just how it goes. It's how it works. So if you're going to do it yourself, which I don't necessarily recommend these days, uh, I'm even partnered with a library now to represent my catalog. Even me, I have a lot of relationships, but I don't have time to be taking them out to lunches and networking constantly because the business is saturated. So I partner with music libraries and other partners who have the full staff and investors behind them. So I'm partnered with a company that's uh, supported by Universal and Sony, and they distribute my catalog for me. And that takes the pressure off so I can focus on content creation and A&R and signing new talents. So that's what, what I like to do. And yeah, you know, Joel, when, is it Joel? I, I, you can't speak to me, I'm so used to being in Zoom. I'm gonna say Joel, because I think it's Joel. Sometimes I hear it's best to do it yourself, other times it's best to have a sync agency represent you both. It's definitely both. You need to have a rep. You need to have a good rep, uh, but you also need to know what you're doing. And I want you to think about it like this. Even the biggest artists in the world, Taylor Swift, Kanye West, I always refer back to them, Jay-Z, Beyonce, Lady Gaga, they have representation, but they also do it themselves. They're out there networking, schmoozing with people in the business, you think that they don't walk in a room and say, I'm so excited about my new release, you gotta check it out. You're crazy. They're definitely doing that. They're pitching themselves all the time because it's their art, they love it, it's what they create, it's what they get behind. And then if someone's interested, they say, oh great, let me put you in touch with the Universal, let me put you in touch with my rep, let me put you in touch with my library. You should do the same thing. So you need to know the business, you need to empower yourself with that knowledge so that you can surround yourself with the best team you can, that's possible, and you still want to do it yourself. So you want to do both. Uh, let's see, uh, Corrine. Um, I, I think you asked me this by email, Corrine. Um, yeah, you will still be able to access the content until June and July, or in June and July, yes. And beyond, you have lifetime access to this content, yes. My program is all pre-recorded and if you sign up you will have access to watch it whenever you want so if it's a year two years from now not a problem uh, you can get it now and frankly the the bonuses one of the bonuses are my contract templates so with the course you're getting a bunch of bonuses maybe I can share that I should share the screen and show you guys exactly what you're getting one of them are my contract templates they're worth four thousand dollars that's what I spent on them so that alone is worth I think worth the investment. You don't have to hire an attorney to draft those contracts for you. Uh, they come with the program. Why don't I open up the, the website and I can take you guys through exactly what it comes with. Let's see here. All right, let me make that big. So you can come to this website. It's licenseyourmusic.com slash now. Let me take that away so you guys can see. You can watch this little video that talks about the program. You can listen to testimonials from others who have taken the program. 
and you can see this is our last enrollment, 75% off. Here's all that you're getting. You're gonna gain the business confidence so you're competing on a level playing field with your peers. You'll discover the most common mistakes to avoid so you actually get license. You'll save years of trial and error. You'll learn the fundamentals and legalities that surround music licensing without having to spend a fortune on tuition. So others, uh, there's courses and programs. Wow, that's big. Hold on. That should be like that. Oh, what happened here? Bring it back. There we go. Uh, there's other courses and tuitions. Wow, that's annoying. That charge like $25,000, $45,000. My program's $497,000. So there you go. Um, you go behind the scenes on projects that I've music supervised. So I take you behind the scenes and show you the licensing process on one of the tracks that we had to clear for Won't You Be My Neighbor, a film that focused for features release in 2017. Um, you'll learn my proven pitching techniques so you're not wasting your time pitching the wrong way. Uh, you'll gain an understanding of the music licensing landscape so you can license your music with confidence. Just having that business acumen and that confidence when you meet with people, when you're talking with them is so important. Um, they will take you so much more seriously when you have that knowledge, you're, you're fully empowered to take control of your career. So in module one, we'll talk about the basics. You know, what exactly is music licensing? Why should you focus on it? We'll go over the power of collaboration. We'll go over key terms you need to understand music licensing lingo. Um, the PRISM method. This is a method and a way that you can maximize your recording sessions so you end up with many products that you can market from one recording session. Uh, then module two will go into Elevate. This is my module on mindset. I'm going to teach you my seven step formula for success called Elevate, giving you practical ways to simplify your workflow, to overcome obstacles to get your music where it needs to be to get licensed, so you can break free from writer's block and accomplish your most challenging goals. I apply Elevate to everything I do, from writing a song to getting ready for a pitch meeting, uh, to recording a song, to meeting with someone. Um, everything I do, I apply Elevate to, and it's worked for me. So I'm teaching that to you in Module 2 to help you succeed as well. In Module 3, we'll go over the fundamentals uh, so that you can communicate with others professionally and confidently. We'll cover topics like copyright law as it pertains to music licensing. We'll go over a case study so you can understand how that works in actuality. We'll talk about master fees and sync fees so you know what to expect. We'll talk about performance rights organizations and royalty income, cue sheets, and much more. So now you know the what. We'll go into more about representation and rate cards so you're not taken advantage of. So you can avoid costly mistakes from you don't want to sign bad deals. Uh, we'll talk about the different types of representation available to you and what to look for in a rep. Uh, the types of fees that you can expect to earn from the various forms of media that you'll be licensing to. I think, Samantha, you had a question about that earlier, so we'll go deeper into that in the program. Uh, blanket licensing, retitling libraries, much more. And then we'll go into the who. This is the gatekeepers. So you know who you're pitching your music to and how they work. We'll go over who all the gatekeepers are, how to be sure that your music actually reaches the right people. We'll go over a unique system I developed called the funnel system so you understand how the decision making process works. So now you've learned the what and you've learned the who. So now we'll dive into the how. This is probably the most important module. This is how to pitch your music. So this helps you navigate through that crowded space, that saturated space of sync licensing so you can make sure that your pitch is on point and effective. So I'll teach you how to master the art of the pitch. There is an art to pitching and you wanna make sure you understand how to pitch your music so you can get those placements and how to make sure your music is ready. We'll talk about the psychology behind networking, the importance of metadata, and we'll go over how to create metadata, the real party to pitch to, and there's a lot more in that module as well. Module seven is the licensing process. So if I came to you today and I wanted to license your song, would you know what to do? Module seven will help you learn. So you first you learn the what, you learn the who, you learn the how, then we go over the process. So now you know the basics. Well, here's what you're gonna need to know when someone's interested in licensing your music. We'll talk about quote requests. We'll go over a confirmation of use and a license request 
and mass, <coughs> excuse me, master and sync licenses. And we'll also go over the amount of time it takes for the money to start coming in and why that is. With that module, you get my contract templates. So you will get my quote request templates. You will get my confirmation of use template and you will get my master and sync license templates. So when you get that first placement, you have those templates and you forever have access to those. So um, I think that's, that's a huge value uh, of the program. Uh, module eight is basically module seven, the licensing process, but in effect, like on an actual project. So module eight is like you're sitting with me in my studio and I'm saying, here's what I did when I cleared this song. Let's, sh let's go through the process together. Like I'm training you to be a music supervisor. So it's really, really a great module. Um, let's see here. Jonathan Waller. Why not? Let's hear what Jonathan has to say. Hey everyone, my name is Jonathan Waller and I'm a singer, songwriter, producer, uh, produce under the, or published under the name Big Red Capes. And I'm very interested in sync music, so I found Jody Friedman's course on uh, music licensing uh, masterclass and I uh, went through it very quickly and I just wanted to uh, share how valuable this course is because you know, I've, I've taken a lot of courses over the last couple of years. I'm very interested in breaking into the sync world. And, you know, a, a lot of courses offer um, high level uh, information about the nuts and bolts of sync. But I got to tell you, it's really refreshing and helpful to have a music supervisor um, who's also an artist and composer himself, but a, a music supervisor sort of take you aside and as if you're you know, sitting at his desk and he's sort of showing you like, here's what the contract looks like. Here, here are the specific things that um, language you could use. Here's what you maybe shouldn't say. Um, and some examples of how when people have said this to me, uh, it didn't work out or how it comes across. Um, there was a level of experience and um, helpfulness that comes from learning from an actual music supervisor who's willing to take the time uh, to explain some of the fundamental concepts um, and in doing so giving you the opportunity to um, uh, you know figure out how you want to steer your own uh, engagement uh, and career when it comes to sync licensing so uh, Jody I it does a great job of presenting information in a concise way. It doesn't take a long time to get through the course, but the amount of information that's in there and the way it's organized gives you a really invaluable resource that you can go back to when you're ready. Like there were some modules where I wasn't, you know, I'm like, I'm not quite there yet in my career, but I know that when I get there, I know where to go and um, find that example contract or find that language that I should put in the email or, or how should I negotiate uh, when um, you know, this comes up. Uh, he gives a lot of advice that's, that you can trust. And then I think the thing that was maybe most surprising to me but also really helpful was Jody actually answers the questions that you ask. Um, he, he answered questions that I asked within a day or two uh, within the platform, but also he's very active in the Facebook group um, and, and has been doing a lot of uh, coaching calls and, and uh, Q and A's with the community. And a lot of times you'll find that uh, maybe there's 10 to 20 people on those calls, which, uh, you might look at it and say, oh man, only 10 to 20 people joined. But for me, when there's only 10 or 20 people in the room, that means you can actually ask your question and get an answer and maybe even ask a follow-up. It doesn't feel like there's a, a time crunch. So I'm very grateful for Jody for uh, putting this course together and continuing to uh, help the uh, students uh, like myself and others figure, figure this game out. Um, because, you know, for those that are, that love music, there's a, and want to break into the sync world, there's definitely a learning curve um, and arguably a big one. And, uh, you know, when there's so much competition, you want to find those mentors and those resources that help you um, maybe uh, find a shorter path uh, up the mountain of that learning curve. So, 
so Jody, thank you for all that you've done to uh, make that happen. And uh, and uh, please, if you are considering uh, breaking into the sync world and, and considering taking this course, uh, I, I definitely recommend it. And, um, and I wish you well on your journey. Thank you. Thanks, Jonathan. All right, so what else are you getting bonuses? We talked about the contract templates. Let me pull that away. I'm also going to throw in these six panels with different experts. We've got a panel with Mike Ladman, and we talk about, this is an awesome panel. We go over the um, bunch of ads that he worked on in 2020 and uh, some collaborations that they, the brands did with Riza and Serena Williams. It was a really, really fun panel. We watch the ads. We talk about how the creative decisions are made so that when you're pitching the ads, you know you have more insight into how that process works. Uh, we do a listening session here. This is with uh, myself, Hunter George, Sarah Ponder, and Brittany Duget. If you don't know those names, they're uh, all music supervisors um, themselves. And this is, you know, even though it's not your song being listened to, I think there's so much to be learned by attending these sessions and observing and listening to and what what how are they clicking around? What are they listening for? Um, what are they listening to first? Why didn't they like that track? Why did they like that track? You know, where do they see it working? That can help you be prepared the next time you're sitting down to write a song or record a song. Uh, we also talk with Julian Drucker. We go behind the scenes on a film that he was part of the team on, uh, f uh, the music team, and it was for Netflix's The Prom with Meryl Streep and Nicole Kidman. So you, you hear about the process for a musical as well, so you can decide whether or not that's a fit for you. And we talked with Joel C. High. Joel is a highly regarded uh, veteran music supervisor. He was the president of the music, the Guild of Music Supervisors. He was, actually. I'm, I think Madonna Wade Reed is now. But uh, we go in the day in the life of his, his life as a music supervisor. And he works with uh, Tyler Perry and Rob Zombie. So we talked to him about those clients and what it's like working for them. We talked about how um, you know, Joel himself likes to receive music, what's his process. Everybody's different. Every, one person's gonna say, oh, I like you know, streaming only. And another person, will, that's unlikely, but <laughs> someone might say, I like getting AIS with embedded metadata, where most will say, I want MP3s. Every supervisor has their own process. I like getting delivered through Box. I like Disco. I like iTunes. You know, Everybody has their own process. So. Watching these are really, I think, helpful there. You'll get some access and insight there. We talked to Jennifer Smith, a great friend and an excellent supervisor. She's worked on a lot of reality television, a lot of scripted versus unscripted. So you learn about that process. We talk about splice in that session. So we can decide, you can decide whether or not you want to continue using splice for licensing. And then I brought this one in, this, this great conversation I had with my songwriting mentor, Judy Stakey. Who is the VP of Creative for was the VP of Creative for Warner Chapel? Uh, she developed songwriters and artists like Katy Perry and Gavin DeGraw, um, Carol King, Jerry Goffin, Barry Barry Mann, Cynthia Whale, some of the biggest powerhouse songwriters in the world. Uh, learned from Judy, and it's a really awesome, awesome segment to watch. So you'll get that as a bonus. You get my five-part training on how to get your music heard by music supervisor course. Uh, there's downloadable handbooks uh, that you get, downloadable cue sheets. You'll get 20% off your first year of Disco. Disco is the industry standard for file sharing uh, within the industry. The, it's, it came on the scene like four years ago now and it just took over everything else. Everybody loves it. So you get 20% off your first year if you decide you want to join. You can do two payments of $2.97 or one payment of $4.97. I have one. Uh, option to do those the multi-pay option if you need some help there uh, we made that available to you and some more testimonials you can read about if you'd like again it's our last enrollment ever so let me go back on camera here uh, let's see close that out that up and go back on there we are so any other questions um, specifically about the program not about licensing advice I'm here tonight to answer questions about what you'll learn in this program. Um, so let's see, there's a few questions here. I do, Mick, I talk about exclusive and all the terms that you go over in the program itself. We, we go really in depth in that. So 
Uh, if you don't understand that yet, I'd highly recommend you, you hop into the program, especially at this price. It's uh, uh, the last time I'll be doing it. I'm moving into the sync world with three reps in LA now from the library music world. Okay, that's good. You have reps. That's good. Are they good reps? That's a question. Uh, you want to make sure you have a good rep, the right rep for you. But that's good. That's a good start. So um, let's see. Any other questions about the program itself? Uh, again, if you're joining us from Facebook or uh, YouTube or Amazon Live, I don't even know where it's airing on Amazon. I just was able to choose that as a destination. Be curious to know where that landed. Um, but if you are joining us from one of those platforms, come over to youtube.com slash license your music, subscribe, and I even have a fancy subscribe thing here for you. Subscribe, and uh, then you'll be able to chat with me here. If you're having trouble chat messaging me, come over to our website at youtube.com slash license your music, and subscribe. Uh, that mixer pillow I got from Amazon. I think you asked me that before. Maybe someone else asked me that before. But yeah, I got it from Amazon. I don't know how I came across it. It like, you know, Amazon tracks what you're looking up. I was looking up audio gear, and then it popped up as, you might like this mixer pillow. And of course, I do. <laughs> I'm glad you dig it. Um, let's see. Michelle, you only have one song you're needing help with. Good for you. That's awesome. All right, uh, let's see. Schedule's about to get very crazy. Yeah, look, you could always get it now and watch it months from now, whatever works for you. But I will say this is, this is the definite last time I'm gonna, I'm gonna be doing it. So hop in now, grab it, and take advantage of this, uh, the price before it's gone. It's so cliche, but it's true. Um, all right, well, if there aren't any more questions, I'll probably call it. I'll, I'll hang out for a few minutes here and see if anyone has any other questions about the program. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for spending this time with me. And it's Friday night. Where's my glass of wine? I don't have a glass of wine nearby. I should have, should have prepared that. Um, yeah, look, I'm, I'm still going to be coaching Tony. That's a great question. Um, this course will be available to those who sign up for it, and it'll still be in my system. I'm not shutting down License Your Music. Uh, I'm still going to be coaching. I'm just not going to be opening up this particular program. Uh, the reason is things have just got really busy. Uh, there's more content being created than ever before now. And I just came off of a really busy job from September to February where I was hardly available to focus on my current students. And I didn't like that. I want to be able to um, properly coach my students and be there for them. And if I keep doing this program, it takes me away from my other coaching um, businesses that I'm running and the other offerings that I have. So this program's going away. There will be some other things down the line, but this particular program is going to be no more. Are there any Q&A sessions that with you that come with the program? No, not at this price. I used to do that and I used to do those coaching calls. Um, but no, not for this one, Corrine. Uh, if you want to be a part of a bigger community, then uh, I, I would suggest after you enroll in the program and you've gone through it a bit, reach out to me and we can talk about uh, further coaching and you joining our all access community. That's only for people who really go through this program because you need to have the, the basic foundation first. Otherwise, you're going to be wasting your money. So, um, yeah. Thank you, Tony. I appreciate that. Yeah. You're very welcome, Corrine. Corrine, where are you coming in from? Where are you joining us from? Actually, everybody, where are you coming in from? Let's see. Um, Samantha, I may miss this question above. Do I send out opportunities to the people enrolled in the course? No, not in this course. No. No. Um, Canada. Oh, nice. Very nice. Uh, Mick coming from Brighton. Gosh, what time is it, Mick? It's got to be late over there. Or early, for that matter. Samantha's in New York. Awesome. Awesome. You're very welcome, Michelle. My pleasure. My pleasure. 
I actually enjoy this. I really do. I enjoy seeing you guys succeed and I want you to come into my world because I think that I can help you. And I tried to make it as affordable as possible. I debated what price to offer this at and I thought this is really the lowest I can go um, considering the value of the course. So 150. Okay, well 2 a.m. is not too bad for musicians. That's like um, normal bedtime for me too. <laughs> Tony's coming in from Australia. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Samantha. I appreciate it. Thank you. Michelle's here from Santa Fe. Nice. Michelle, do you go to uh, South by Southwest? I know that's coming up pretty soon. A lot of colleagues are heading there. I've never been. Just never quite made it. And now I'm not sure if I'll ever get there. <laughs> Maybe one day. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll hang out for like another minute. Any other questions about the program? And if not, I'll call it. But thank you guys. I will um, leave this replay up for a little bit here. Uh, and tomorrow night at midnight's the the time. So if you're on the fence, come and join us. It'll be good. Uh, you will not regret it. Put it that way. You will not regret it. And you'll have access to all the content, all the bonuses for years to come. All right. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Have a great night. Bye-bye. Oh. Bye-bye. <laughs>